Thank you so much, my elder, for the prayers. And thank you so much, Sister Judy, for the wonderful singing. God is good. God is good. And all the time. Uh, thank you so much for finding time to sit at the feet of Jesus. This has been a wonderful Sabbath from morning, wonderful presentations. And I want to appreciate the Adventurers uh, Club for organizing a wonderful event for this Sabbath of worship. I also want to appreciate you for finding time to sit at the feet of Jesus and not to be out of the church building but to listen at the feet of Jesus. Our presentation this evening is entitled If God Be For You. If God Be For You. And that is a thought that I want to draw from this book of Second Kings. Second Kings chapter 7. Turn with me to Second Kings chapter 7. I intend to stand there briefly for not more than 20 minutes. Second Kings chapter 7, reading from verse 3 to verse 9. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we invite your presence to speak to us in 22 minutes that, Lord, this presentation will draw us closer to you. You promised to labor with me, and all that I ask now is that, Lord, you may be able to keep your promise that is speaking to this weak man, weak vessel, that, Lord, you may be able to speak to your children. Now, this evening, once again, do what only you can do, speaking to us for a plead in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 3, chapter 7, verses 3 to 9, it says, Now there were, there were four lepers, men, at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? Verses 4. If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if you sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. Verses 5. And they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. If you are still with me, say Amen. Verses 8, verses 7. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp, camp intact, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. Verses 8. And when these lepers came to the outskirt of the camp, they went into one tent and, uh, and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and eat them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from the, there also and went and eat it. Verses 9, the last verse says, then they said to one another, We are not doing right. This day is a day of good news, and we remain silent. If you wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household, if God be for us. As I sat there, I was thinking this evening of a young lady who probably has been raped in a forgotten corner of the world and is at crossroad wondering how to pick herself from there. 
As I sat down there, I was thinking of a family going through so much pain. You've lost a close family member. You are going through traumas of this life. And you are wondering, how can I pick, how can we pick ourselves from here? As I sat there, I was thinking of someone who has lost his job and is probably worried how he can be able to pick his life. School fees there. The children has to be fed for. And is worried, how can I pick up from here? How can I pick my broken pieces and move? As I sat there, I was thinking of someone whose business is not doing well and is not doing right. You are at crossroad and you are wondering, how can I pick up myself from here? The good news is that if God be for you, then nothing can be against what? Against you. Are you with me? If you are with me, say amen. No, you are not with me. If you are with me, wave back to me. I'm saying that the good news that I have this evening is that if God be for you, then who can be against what? Against you. If God is your friend, if God is your anchor, if God is the friend that you can trust, then nothing is be, should be able to scare you. Sometimes in this life, we are at various crossroads. Sometimes you don't know how to pick it up. You don't know how to move from the situation and the difficulties that you experience. But I'm here with the good news that you may go through so much. You may be shedding tears even now. But when God is for you, then no one can be against you. Nothing can be against you. What do you say, church? Yes. These four lepers are, are at crossroads. And they do not know how to pick it up. For the Bible says they are at the gate. They cannot go inside for they are leprous. Are you with me? Are you with me? They are at the gate. And at the gate, they are at crossroad. Why? Because of the pigments in their skin, they are not allowed to go into the city. And because of that, they are kicked out of the site. You see, there are families where people are not welcome easily. There are families where, because of the conditions that you are in, no one respects you. There are families that because of the status that you are in, maybe you lost your job, maybe you are not married, you are not welcome in those societies. These guys are seated at the gate and they are worried. Where can we do, what can we do? They don't have any food. And then I love it because they came up to, they came with a solution. For they say that, let us go to the, uh, to the enemies. Why? Because in the city we are not needed. If you stay here, we'll die anyway. Are you with me? If you stay here, we'll die anyway. If you go to our camp, they don't need us. Actually, there are four and they're looking at themselves and they're saying, my friend, this pigment, because leprosy is a, a, leprosy is a disease which eats, kills from inside. By the time it manifests itself from the outside, you are almost nobody. So they look at themselves and they say, my friend, we are not needed here. Let us, but we need food anyway. If we move to the, the camp, they don't need us anyway. No one will welcome us because leprosy, if you are a leprosious, you are separated from the rest of the community. If you are a husband, you are separated from your wife. If you are a child, you are separated from the family. And so they say now, let us go to the camp of the Syrians. If you stay here, we will die. If we go to our camp, we will not only die, but we might be rejected. Number three, they say, no, let us be moving, but let us move to the camp of the enemy. Why? Because in the camp of the enemy, maybe they will have mercy on us. Number two, they might kill us, but anyway, if they kill us, we will die anyway. Mm. Are you with me? I love these people because they come to a situation where they realize that we are hopeless. Who can help us? And then they say, let us move to the camp of the enemy because maybe faith is able to turn the heart of the enemy to become our friend. This is the God that we serve. That sometimes even your enemies can become your friend. Hey, hallelujah. That sometimes even those who don't like your face, they will welcome you anyway because God can move their hearts. If God be for you, you are not supposed to be discouraged with the things that are happening about you. You move in faith and God will be able to make the impossible what? Possible if God be for you. Hey. I remember my stepmother when you were left and my father 
died and my mom was not at home. You know the story. And so we were left with the stepmother. And then the stepmother looked at us one evening. I had with my eldest brother. One evening. And then she came to a logical conclusion that the best way to move from here is to kick these young, young kids out of my home. Out of our home. So she said, my friend, you, the two of you, you are eating too much. Eating too much. You need to go. It is drizzling in the evening. And then she says, no, when I look at you, you are eating too much. Because I and my brother, we are, we are developed survival mechanism on how to survive. We are, you see, it is good to be creative. And see, my brother is short and I'm tall. And so, during those days, in those homes of the village, you realize that there was a way the food used to be hanged somewhere in what they call a seropak. Are you getting me? And so they used to hang food up there. And then I and my brother, when we are eating, sometimes we are developed mechanisms, survival techniques. Those days, the omena, the omena, omena is omena anyway in English, or Kiswahili. The omena that used to be bought those days was very huge. You remember those days? The omena was a fat omena. And so she will give us a portion of the omena and the ugali. So we looked at each other with my brother and we said, no fun, because the ugali and the omena are too, too small for two of us. Why don't we now divide the omena three times? So when you are eat, biting, you are, you are picking one and sure that the same omena, the piece of omena, you are biting three times in order to consume the, 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 the ugali. So we are taking that and then I was good in making the pronouncement. When the ugali is over, we still have pieces of omena. We will say, my friend, the ugali is over. And I still have the omena. And they said, you are eating too much. You are eating too much. And so they will, she will add us the, the, the ugali. And sometimes you say, no, my friend, why don't you just consume the omena that you have? And so that was not enough. We looked at each other with my brother. And I said, my friend, I'm tall and you are short. So what you do when the food is up there, if God be for you. Are you with me? If the food is up there. So I said, my friend, I will be carrying you. I will be carrying you up. So when you go to the Osiropo, I ensure that you pick the largest portion of what you get there. So I will be carrying my brother and he picks up what is in the Osiropaka. Osiropaka is just Osiropaka. Are you together with me? What is up there in the Osiropaka? And so one evening, one evening, I'm busy, I'm carrying my brother, I'm saying, pick, pick, pick the, what you find up there. And then my mama comes and finds that my brother and is up there in the city of Parker, picking the largest one down there. And they said, young people, you are eating too much, and picks my brother's hand into the fire. I looked at it, and then she says, my friend, if that is not enough, I'm kicking you out, you are eating too much. Hey, eating too much. And so in the evening, it was drizzling, and then my stepmother said, go, you go. But my, my grandmother was listening. When she was saying, go, you go, it is drizzling. And then my grand, grandmother says, you are kicking them out. From today, I'll be taking good care of them. If God be for you, who can be against you? Are you with me? God can turn your situation around. These people are here. They're saying we must go. And I love it. For the Bible says, as they were going, mm, are you with me? I'm in the Bible. As they, were, as they were going into the camp of the enemy, the Bible says God had gone ahead of them. No, you didn't pick that. That's why your response is not very good. Let me look at this one. As they're going, God says that I want to change things around. You are hopeless now. But I want to turn your hopelessness into something better. So as they were going, the Bible says, you know, leprosy was eating from the inside. So by the time you are walking, you cannot feel any pain. You can't feel any pain. Leprosy attack took senses, sensitivity out of your system. That even if someone chops your hand, you cannot feel anything. If someone chops your leg, you cannot feel any pain. If someone removes your eye, you can't feel anything. But then they are moving in faith. And the Bible says, as they were moving, walking majestically, the enemies felt like the army was coming. Are you with me? You know, you didn't pick that. 
You didn't pick that. The enemy is listening to four walking in faith. They are walking knowing very well that if God be for us, then anything can be, nothing can be against us. And as they are moving, the camp of the enemy, they fled, saying that God had sent an army against them. Let me tell you, my friend, if God be for you, nothing can be against you. If God be for you, he can turn your situation around. If God be for you, nothing is impossible before God. We might have waited for a chance for years. If God be for you, the right time will come. If God be for you. Hey. Hallelujah. If God be for you. I remember, I want to finish this story, if God be for you. I had gone to a, a meeting in Mount Kenya that year when my wife was expectant carrying our twins. So I went to my place called Kangeta for a meeting. I finished, came back, I was going to Luahaha, that is Kenya-Uganda border for committing. And then the other week after I came back, I went to Lovington committing. But my wife was carrying our twins. And then I said, now, what do we do now? Because they had said, you need to come ahead of time. You need to come ahead of time because this is not a very good uh, situation. Your child, one is no more... Normally lying. The other one is abnormally lying. Then I said, what do you mean? They said, my friend, when the child is lying normally, it means that when the mother is conceiving, it means that the head comes out first. When the child is lying abnormally, it means that the legs come out first. So I said, no, what do you mean by that? So what is the, what is the, what is making this situation very technical? It says, come ahead of time. Come ahead of time. And then I says, no, I'm looking for school fee. I'm not ready to look for money to deliver the baby. <laughs> so I went to Mama Lucy. We did scanning. I said, no. Mama Lucy says, yes, one child normally. The other one I said, it's okay, but should I look for school fee or I look for money for deliver the, to deliver the babies? I don't trust this hospital. So we move to Kenyatta for the second scan, uh, scanning to confirm whether she's carrying twins or not. Yeah? So we went to Kenyatta for another scanning. And the doctor says, young man, it is true that your wife is carrying the twins, but one child is ab lying abnormally, the other one is lying normally. Hey, this is serious. You have to come one month before the due date for the CS. Because this is, look for 120,000. Hey. I say, now look for money for delivering the baby. I look for the money for the school fee. Are you with me? Are you with me? If God be for you. So when I was at the Lovington commuting early in the morning, my wife calls, says that amniotic fluid has come out. Come out. Then I'm saying, what do you mean amniotic fluid? This water which protects the babies has come out in the house. So they are lying normally, abnormally, but then amniotic fluid has come out. I saw we we pray, we take the, the wife to hospital, Kenyatta hospital, for the delivery. The devil was mocking us. If God be for you. The devil was mocking us. I'm in the committee. I don't have 120,000. My wife is in hospital. So I asked the elder, please let us pray at 3. That is early in the morning. At 3 p.m., no labor pain. I say, my friend, this is too much. So we pray again. I leave and I go to Kenyatta to see the situation, how it is going on. I stay with my wife. I realize that for men who are here, when your wife is sick, you will tend to be sicker than the wife. Hey, some men don't agree. Hallelujah. You must be sicker. We don't agree. Why are you looking at me like this? Sicker. As I was walking up there, up there, up there, Wondering now, what do I do? So they timed me. When I left my wife's side, I went outside to those shops which are there walking and praying, walking and meditating. And then they call us. I come back, I find that my wife has been taken to the CS room for the operation. I made the loudest noise in Kenyatta, at Kenyatta Hospital. I was a madman. I want my wife. How 
can you sneak in? How can you sneak in? Then I pretended to be calling a serious doctor. And then the nurse said, no, we are giving her another one hour in the serious room. And then if God be for you. The Bible says, the Bible is not saying this one now. I'm saying now, inside the CS room, if God be for you, God knew that I didn't have the money and my wife has to deliver. Are you with me? So in the CS room, the labor pain started. Labor pain started in the CS room. Serious labor pain. My wife started making noise. Yeah. Then they are saying, my friend, what is wrong with you? This is CS room. We don't expect anyone to be making noise. Are you normal? Are you abnormal? And my wife continued. Ah, ah, ah. So the doctor went to check on her to find out if she's creating it or is new. Then when the doctor went to check on her, the doctor realized that one child was normal, lying normal is almost coming out, dropping. The doctor says, my friend, don't push. Don't push. We are taking you back to the normal delivery room. Don't push. But the baby is coming. Baby is coming. You see, when God is for you, even if you don't push, God will push. So they brought her back to the normal delivery room. And then when she was there lying, everything is in order. The one baby came out who was lying normally. And then the other one, who was stubborn, some assaulted and came out. <laughs> if God be for you, you need to trust God like this man. Things not, may not make sense for you even now. You may be in a tough situation even now that you are wondering, how will I make it through? If God be for you, the ways will be opened. What do you say, my friend? God is always faithful. Say that those, your children are still at home. You didn't take them to school because you are still wondering whether I'll be able to pay the school fee or not. God is able to make the impossible what? Possible. Have the faith. Dress up the boy. Take the child to school without money and you see the child studying. Eh? Are you with me? These people says, let us go. And as the Bible says, the enemies, the enemies had the footsteps of the, they were feeling like the army has descended on them and they fled away. And these people were able to deliver the entire situation. I want to say, my friend, as I conclude in the remaining three minutes that I have, what you need in your life, what you need more than a car, is the presence of God. What you need in your life, more than the size of the house you are dreaming of, you need Christ in your heart to make the impossible possible. What you need in your life, when you are praying, you can't sleep at night. You are worried whether things will make sense or not. You need the presence of God in your heart. If God be for us, then who can be against us? This God that people underrate, that God has been able to change situations. So my stepmother left us when we were very young and went and got married next to our home. Next to our home. To mock us. So when we went to the, to the, to the market, we meet her there. We are walking almost naked. We meet her there, enjoying, enjoying life. But then in the process of time, when my mother came back, she also came back. Human beings are like that. But when you love God, he gives you the art to forgive. Hallelujah! God is always faithful. If God be for you, walk positively, knowing very well that he's able to turn your darkness into light. Hallelujah! Walk positively, knowing very well even if you have waited for a husband for years, don't worry about a husband. Partnership with God is more than a husband. Is this thing working? Hallelujah. Are you with me? God is more important. Partnership with God is more important than a husband. Are you getting me? Why are you not responding? Are you getting me? Partnership with God 
is worth a degree, more than a degree. Are you with me? I want to close by saying, I don't have time, this was someone it. And I want to say to someone who is sick even now, in the hospital bed, you are down admitted. And you are looking up, and you are, I've been down here for years. No one, almost sick, almost admitted. My friend, I'm saying, if God be for you, you will be discharged and you will go home. If God be for you. So many people die in hospital because they feel that God is not in control. That's why they die. And if you can spend the time to visit them and tell them, my friend, God cares even when you are here, many of them will be discharged. Are you with me? So let me conclude. We lost a sister here. We were with Pastor Tumpes, I remember. Pastor Tumpes and Pastor Kali. We went to Kenyatta to pray with a lady who was sick. The husband had frustrated and the lady was admitted, swollen, beaten, and given up. So we went there and we spent the time talking to the lady. God loves you. God cares. Don't leave your children. Your husband is a bad man. Eh? He might have frustrated you like this, but there's a God in heaven who can turn, turn your situation what? Around. Eh? But then I had traveled to a funeral in Kisi. I don't know what happened. Then we were called in the evening that the sister is now doing very well. She's actually picked very well. She's now eating. She's clean. She wants to be discharged. And then after two days, the husband visits again. Who sent you there? You will have stayed far away from her. So the husband visits her there and looks at her. Maybe says, I can see you are doing well. But where are you going after you are discharged? Whose house? Whose house? So the, the sister calls us saying, my friend, my sister now has decided to die. She has given up. She wants to die. Many people are dying you know, these hospitals because they feel like they are left alone. No one can take care of them. Go and tell them about a savior who is able to make the impossible what? Possible. And the lady died soon after. And I want to say to someone who is in hospital now, you are not alone. God is with you. I want to say to someone who graduated, there's no job. Don't give up. God is with you. I want to say to a child who is left orphans, the parents died. And you are wondering, how will I pick up myself from here? There's a God in heaven who is the father to the fatherless and is a defender to the widow. If God be for you. you know, who can be? Again is what? Again is you. That one you know? Okay, say it with me. If God be for you, no weapon. Hey. If God be for you, no weapon formed against you shall what? And the Bible says, no tongue shall rise against you in the judgment. That tongue shall be condemned. And I'm praying that as you go home, as you enjoy your Sabbath, may you always remember that if God be for you, then nothing can be against you. How many are saying, please, pastor, pray with us that I may be able to trust in God even more. I want to invite you to come and join me in prayers. If you have a special prayer request that you want God to do today, not tomorrow, Make a step of faith and come as I invite my choristers and Pastor Tumpes to be praying after this. Praying with us after this. If you want God to do something for you, how many wants God to do something in their lives? Stand on your feet. But those who want God to do something today, not tomorrow, today, make a step of faith and join us here. You want God to do today, not tomorrow. These are the people who don't trust God enough. You are going to do something for you today, not even tomorrow. Not tomorrow. You want him to do quickly. Quickly. If that God be for you, then no one, nothing can be against you. Choristers, I can't see choristers here.
want us to pray. You want God to do today. No tomorrow to do today. As soon as possible. I must wait for choristers to join me here. If you know you are a chorister, join me here. I want us to do a song. God cares for you. Like these four lepers, they trusted the Lord's promise and he was able to do it for them. If you can trust God like them, then God can make the impossible possible. There are people who are sick, they have given up. But we are praying that God be for you. That those who have been kicked from their houses, we are praying that God can be for you. That those who have waited for breakthroughs for years, you want God to do it quickly for you. That those, their husband want to kick them out of their homes, thinking they are not useless people. If God be for you. If God be for you. Why well, is that Judy? Judy come. us to do song number 92 that is my favorite song 92 after we have done this song we are going to pray if God be for you song 92 song number 92 this is my father's world be glad. If God be for you, nothing, no one, nothing, no son of a man, no daughter of a woman can stand against you when God be for you. Amen? Pastor, come and pray with us. I will uh, whisper a prayer, then Pastor will pick from there to continue. Let us pray. Eternal Father, if you be for us, who can be against us? If you be for us, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you, Jesus, because you are a refuge and strength, a very present help in the hour of trouble. Your children have come. Some are raising their hands in hope. They are not here. Wherever they are, 
they have listened to you speak to us that Lord, if you be for us, then nothing can be against us. Probably there's one who is in hospital even now. Father, I'm praying that you may be able to heal in Jesus' name. Maybe there's one who has lost a job and worried how he'll be able to pick self from there. I'm praying, Jesus, that you, whose silver and gold belong to, that Lord, may you be able to intervene and save their situation in Jesus' name. There's one who sent the children to school. No fee was paid. They are trusting in you that you may be able to come through for them. I'm praying, Jesus, that if you be for them, Father, may you be able to open doors in Jesus' name. There's a mother who is praying for the children. There's a mother who is praying for a breakthrough. There's a man who is praying for breakthrough. Father, I'm praying that you may be able to come through for them. Why? Because silver and gold belong to you. There's someone who is hoping that, Lord, you may be able to save the children from drug addictions, save the families from separation, save the family from tears. I'm praying, Jesus, that you may be able to wipe these tears out of this household in Jesus' name. There's a husband who frustrates the wife, and the wife is contemplating committing suicide. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. Then with this sister know that there's a God in heaven that if you be for us, then nothing can be against us. Father, sometimes in two years, three times, six months, one month, today, we are praying, Jesus, that may you change our situations. Why? Because you are our God and we are your people. May you come through for us. There's one who has lived with children. The husband packed and disappeared. These children are in your care. May you save them. May you provide for them. May you guide them. May they look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Bless all of us. Keep us moving in faith for our trust and pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, a King of glory, Lord Almighty, we come before you by faith, claiming your divine promises which never fail. For new every morning, are your mercies and your grace to us. You have given us the promise, the Lord, come unto me, you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Heavenly Father, your children have come before you because they are heavily laden in various aspects of life. You know each and every one of us. You know our going out and our coming in. You know our struggles in life. You know our environments and everything around us. Lord, our ways are very clear before your face. We commit everything unto your hand. My brothers and my sisters standing today, we are all here because we have faith in you. As you've promised us in First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, that if we cast all our burdens to you, you care us for us. Therefore, Lord, we commit our burdens unto you. You know our private, our individual, and our personal burdens. May you meet us at our point of need. As a human being, we would wish that everything disturbing our peace, Lord, you will remove it today and right now. But Lord, we pray that your will be done. Many at times we pass through hardship in this life, and some tempting circumstances. But Lord, we've come to know that having that firm relationship with you is more worth than any relationship that we might have here on earth. And all these experiences are just teaching us to like to be more like you. Help us therefore, Heavenly Father, that even in our circumstances and in our challenges of life, we will trust in you for we know that your divine leadership is with us and by your mighty hand you will lead us even across the river. How we pray that those who are struggling with their family issues, may you Lord meet them at their point of need and may you save your children and their marriages, their loved one and everybody under their care. For those who are struggling with economic issues, Lord may you meet your children at their point of need. For those who are struggling with 
anything in social life with various prayers, various requests. Lord, may you meet your children at their point of need. This is our Heavenly Father. As we come to the end of our worship today, we commit every one of us unto your hands. That Lord, you will be with us and take care of us. That you will shield us and protect us. That Lord, you will bless us the whole week and walk with us. That Lord, we will be with you as you will be with us today and forevermore. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for forgiving our sins and our trespasses. Thank you for washing and cleansing, regenerating us by the blood of Jesus Christ. May we be thine today until you come to take us home. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Let me teach you something. When you are doing may the grace, you don't close your eyes. You open your eyes and you greet your neighbor. Are we together? That's how we do may the grace. Now like now, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God loves you. Thank you so much. May the Lord come through for you, if God be for you. Thank you so much. We've come to the end of our worship today. May the Lord bless you and keep you.